Hello students, this is Mrs. Rupert and we're going to be learning about sequences and notation. First of all, our objective is I can write the rule for sequence using sequence notation. And also we're going to need to know some vocabulary. So basically I'm just reading out of your packet right now, so please follow along. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. So. Vocabulary, sequence. In simplest terms, a sequence is a list of numbers or objects that changes according to some sort of pattern. Example 3, 5, 7, 9 is a sequence starting at 3 and increasing by 2 each time. And we also have things called a term. Each item in this sequence is called a term. Terms are, are identified by their location in the sequence. Terms are represented by a with a subscript number indicating its location in the sequence. In the example above, A1 equals 3 because it is the first term in the sequence. A2 would be 5, A3 would be 7, and A4 would be 9. Um, with, we can re represent it, sequences can be represented as a list of numbers, as tables, and as graphs. So, for example, here's a list of numbers, 0, 5, 10, 15. The rule is the sequence begins at 0 and increases by 5 each time. This would be the first term is 0, second term is 5, third term is 10, fourth term is 15. Okay. So over here is another one where we show a table can also re be represented as a sequence. This sequence begins and begins and one. Oh, the sequence begins one. Actually, it, these are the terms right here. One, two, three, and four. The first term is three. Second term is seven. Third term is 11. And the fourth term is 15. So this sequence begins at three and increases by four each time. So probably change this and one and put at three. Um, I don't know how to change that on here, but I will do that on the other video because I will also be doing an instructional video. I just did this here because I know it's easier for you to read. Here, the sequence begins at 2 and increases by 3 each time. So right here, first term is 2. Second term, 5. Third term, 8. Fourth term, 11 and fifth term 14. So that's a different way to show sequences. So again it could be a list of numbers, it could be a table, or it could be represented by a graph. Sequences are related to functions. When we discuss sequences using function vocabulary, the term numbers are the domain or the x values. So up here um, our term numbers here would be 1, 2, 3, or 4. These are our x values or the domain. And here's our y values or the range. So here it doesn't show the domain, but we know that this is domain would be 1, 2, 3, and 4 because this is the first term in the sequence. So this would be our y value when x is 1, y is 0. When x is 2, y is 5 when x is 3, y is 10, and when x is 4, y is 15, okay? Over here, we see the domain would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the uh, correlated range would be 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. So, um, What is special about sequences as functions is that the, the domain is made up of counting numbers starting with 1. The, the domain is listed as n is greater than or equal to 1. The first term is always term 1. Over here, again, the domain isn't listed, even though 1 would be here for, for the x value. 1 is here for the x value, and 1 is here for the x value. And then here would be a term 2 is 5. Term 2 is here. Again, this is the domain, and the term 2 here is also the domain. So again, the domain is generally the your x values or the first um, 
numbers listed on a table and the first numbers in the graph. And here on the list of numbers, it doesn't even uh, list the domain. These would just be the range. Sequence notation. As with other areas of math, there is a specific notation used for mathematic com communication about sequences. There are two forms of notation that work with sequences, sequence notation and function notation. Here is a generic sequence in sequence notation. You have a sub 1, a sub 2, and sometimes we just go a3, a4, a5, because we know those are going to be sub numbers when they are listed just below the letter. And then we go a to the n minus 2, a to the n minus 1, and then a to the n is generally your last one, or sometimes it can be your first one listed. Here is um, <clears throat> a number line here, and it says complete if n equals 7. If n is 7, we list it as a sub 7. Okay, and then we could go up. What is a to the n plus 1? Put 7 in for n a to the 7 plus 1, this would be a to the 8th. This one, what do you think that would be? You got it, a to the 9th. What about this one? a to the 6th, that's correct. And this one you would write in there, a to the 5th. And then that would, you'd complete all of that. An unknown term is written a to the n. This term is often used as a reference point for other terms. The term before a n minus 1 and the term after a to the n is n a to the n plus 1. So again, the term before a to the n, see this, would be a to the n minus 1. The term after is a to the n plus 1. Okay. Now, we also have some arithmetic formulas. This talks about recursive arithmetic formulas and explicit uh, arithmetic formulas. And then over here we talk about generic formulas. Some of them are recursive and some are explicit. And we will go into more detail on that um, in our next video. Okay, hope you uh, followed all that and I will now start a different video that I can show you how we can write these out. Actually, I can talk a little bit about this first. Actually, no, I'll go to the other video.